exploring Ruby libraries part six, we are going to explore uh, Ruby Roda. Roda is basically a routing tree toolkit, routing tree web toolkit. So let's get started. To know more about Roda, there's an uh, article or URL where we can, you know, get more information. Uh, yeah, it's here. So here it is. Let's uh, go to the about Roda section. So what it says is Roda is a, as usual, routing tree web toolkit. The main philosophy is simplicity, reliability, extensibility and performance. So talking about performance, if you go back to the document URL, they have done a, a couple of benchmark tests. You know, it says that uh, Roda is the fastest when comparing to other frameworks in terms of request per second and memory usage. So Roda is the fastest Ruby web framework as measured by the R10K benchmark. So let's get back to the article. So basically Roda has uh, most basic features enabled by default. Roda ships with an extensive set of features. All other features are enabled separately using a very powerful plugin library. So what they mean is Let's go back to the documentation. If you scroll down, they have a ex ex external plugins for this application. So Roda container enhanced logger. This can be easily integrated to the Roda library. Let's go back and uh, see each of the features plugins that Roda ships with can be thought of as a tool. We may need different tools. Roda lets us choose the tools that we build our web application, okay? In general, Roda operates more like a library than a web framework, okay? Though it is often compared with other fr web frameworks. So Roda performs routing by implementing what its developer calls a routing tree. So this is how a routing tree looks like. Uh, for an URL slash post slash authors from slash post you want to show something edit something new profile new okay the primary advantage of routing tree is that request handling and routing are integrated so that we can handle a request while routing it this can remove lot of duplication inherent inherit inherent in web frameworks that separate routing from request handling Roda is a lightweight library. The basic features enabled by default are implemented in fewer the 800 lines of code. However, Roda ships with around 100 plugins that can handle the needs of most web application. So this is pretty interesting. So mainly basically they have uh, designed this in the performance in mind. So it is widely considered the fastest Ruby web framework while some are some of the optimization of Roda uses make the code more difficult to understand. Most of the Roda's code is easy to understand. So application, those applications who are built on Roda are always easy to understand since it is possible to trace the logic and see exactly how a request will be routed or handled. Okay, this is about uh, some basic information about Roda. I'll be posting this URLs in the description. Please go through it. If I have missed any point, you can post in the comment section so I can also learn it. So let's get back to the documentation. Documentation. Let's click on documentation. Now uh, here you can see readme introduction to Roda. Start here if you're new. Okay, I'm new to this. Let's click on readme. So it has a table of contents. This is how you install gem install Roda. The goals, we already read about the goals. Roda is designed to be simple both inter internally and externally. It uses a routing tree to enable you to write simpler and drier code. Reliability, extensibility and performance. Usage, okay, let's start with a simple example. Let's copy this code. Do we have a copy button? don't think so uh, 
okay uh, let's go back to vs code first thing we need to add a gem roda in a gem file and do a bundle install and uh, we need to create a config ru file so here's a example cat config ru let me remove this we have required roda and uh, we need to run this app so in order to run we need to use this run app freeze.app as per the docs okay everything is set let's know more information about it so we are inheriting the roda class to our app then uh, let's check uh, here's the breakdown for the code so the route block is called whenever a new request comes in it is yielded it is yielded an instance of subclass of rack request with some additional methods for matching routes by convention this ar this argument should be named r okay it's a naming convention okay let's uh, remove everything and uh, you know let's keep it uh, only the root for now Okay, uh, I think uh, I have an extra end. It's not auto indenting. Uh. Uh, so bad. Okay, now let's uh, run this app. You need to run this app. We need to run a rack up command. So it brings up a Puma server. This is the port which the application is running. So it's basically redirecting to let's not do that redirect. Whenever we hit a root, r dot root, we're gonna say hello world. We need to stop the server and rerun it since we have made changes to the code ah okay we got a hello world this is a root url so whenever we hit a root we get this hello world okay you also get a log over here so we made a get request let me stop this and uh, clear it let's see for a different example now mm. okay we tried with the root r dot root now we'll try with r dot on so basically what they are saying is the primary way roots are matched in roda is calling by r dot on r dot is r dot root get post each of these routing methods takes a match block okay r dot on matches if all arguments match r dot is get request r dot root okay these are some information i think you can go through it from the docs so r dot redirect we actually tried with the redirect one let's uh add it back so whenever we hit the r dot root we are redirecting it to r dot hello let's check this uh, rerun the app so it has redirected to hello what else so running the application we already know that we need to use rack up so running a roda application is similar to running any other rack based application that uses config.ru you can start basic server using rack up puma or unicorn okay the routing tree okay so simple routing tree might look like this let's copy this so this is how uh, basic routing works like slash a so if you add one more on inside you get slash a slash b r dot sc one more a b c request inside that you're making r dot get r dot post 
r dot get d do something and so let's try with a different example that is uh, r dot on so r dot on is used to split the tree into different branches okay r dot is finalizes the routing path so this actually finalizes the routing path r dot get and r dot post handles the specific request methods okay let's try this example copy this and uh, what do we do is we remove this code now we have pasted this code so it says that r dot on is used to split the tree into different branches so r dot is finalizes and r dot get perform some operation we're gonna put something hello world and uh, let be hello world uh, post hello world d uh, it sucks actually hmm I think it's done almost done I have made some changes to the code so inside r dot is which is basically means finalizes the routing path so let's run the app rack up uh, okay. so basically there is nothing in the route r dot root so request dot root so we are gonna go to a b c and try it a slash b slash c you get hello world so let's try with d i think uh, did we miss something I think this is a bad indentation. So it's basically R dot is C then D I think uh, should not be. Okay. So I think this is one for this and R dot get is for this and R dot post is for this after C after B. So after B we have two paths. One is uh, R dot C then r dot t and post so let's try with the post uh, i think i have a thunder client new request post i think it's e so you get hello world e so the post is working get is working and the branches is also working so so it is also possible to handle re handle the same request but structure the routing tree by first branching on the request method so what it says that instead of doing this we can also you know do a request method first that is the r dot get or do then we can actually branch out so that is what this means actually so here we are first branching out then performing a get request and post request but here we are actually doing a request method first and then branching out it's like a both uh, vice versa you can also do both the uh, ways i think this is a uh, it has more information on the next video, we'll try to set up a simple application with Rhoda SQL and Puma server, Puma web server with a rake file. I think this is enough for the now to explore. I think I'll share the links in my description. You can go through it. If I have missed anything, please do post it in the comment section. These are just the basic things to, you know, set up or start a startup with some simple application. 
have tried post get and r dot is r dot on have we missed something we also tried r dot redirect okay i think we missed this part run app dot freeze dot app so what is that they have mentioned it over here the freeze dot app at the end is optional freezing freezing the app makes modifying app level settings raise an error alerting you should possibly threat safety issues in your application it is recommended to freeze the app in production and during staging the dot app is an optimization which saves a few method calls for every request okay this is related to threat safety issues and uh, app the dot app is an optimization which saves a few method calls for every request cool uh i think there should be a other way to do this i think i have missed something uh i think it is in this url Okay, yeah, here it is. So we can actually set up this in a different way. So let's uh, copy this code and go back to a config or if I'll remove everything. Let's stop the server. In our config view, we are only going to run our app. We have added a require app. So it says that create a app.rb file. I think this is a standard practice how to build an application to separate everything into a different file let's uh, copy this so let's run this okay r dot get so see so since we are running the rack up this is actually running the application. Let's uh, remove this code. Let's put only r dot root hello world. So we are basically using this require dot app and running this app. In our app dot rb, we are uh, inheriting the Roda. Okay. So did I run the app? Yeah, it's working. That's it, guys. This is about today's video. In the next uh, session, we'll try something out. Try to build a simple application with Ruby, Roda, and SQL, and hope it goes well. Thank you. Peace out.